Hello everyone. We're on the edge of the Sandringham Estate on this Kings Lynn to Hunstanton Road. We're on the good old Brompton Electric. We're heading out to Castle Rising, South Wotton into Kings Lynn. I've stopped to show you this. This is one of our Royal Bank of Scotland um, travel markers. There's over a thousand of these on the on the network, supported by the uh, Royal Bank of Scotland for the millennium. Uh, here we can read it. This is one of a thousand mile posts funded by the Royal Bank of Scotland to mark the creation of the National, National Cycle Network. The National Cycle Network no longer exists because the organisation that runs it has decided <coughs> so much of it is unsafe for a youngster to ride on their own. So it's been called, uh, which is brilliant and understandable. But would you let your youngster cross this road on their own? No, of course you wouldn't. But we're on the edge of the Sandia Estate, and King Prince Charles, or King Charles now, was patron of Sustrans and the National Cycle Network when it was set up in the early 80s. And uh, I guess they dare not close this section of, of Route 1 in North Norfolk. Um, anyway, that's a political thing. These are worth looking at because they have these little embossed pieces. You could take a rubbing of those. I've never done one. I intend doing it. You could take a rubbing of those. And I think this is one further down as well. Most of those are at ground level. <coughs> Excuse me. I.e. dog pee height. Anyway, Sandringham two miles. Kingsley seven miles. More on this video as we progress to Kings Lynn. We're gonna go to North Lynn, hopefully through the fish docks. Hopefully out towards the sea as far as we can go. That's uh that's all we're heading there and down there then I'll probably bring you back from Castle Rising on this video thank you hello everyone right through there is Castle Rising that's about as much as you can see without going well worth a visit we'll jump on the bike <coughs> we'll have a bit of a pedal past See if I can show you a bit more. A couple of cars going. As always, we'll let them pass. So Castle Rising, there's a pub here and a tea room and some beautiful little cottages. Well worth a visit. As soon as these guys have gone by, we'll make a move. Success. So I'm pulling at the entrance because there's a car behind me. So Castle Rising, North Norfolk. Well worth a visit. We're not going in now. That's a video in its own right, I guess. I think I've shown you this before on a previous video. This is uh, erected by a builder. His name is Tom something, where is it? This pyramid was erected by NOW2000 using funds raised by the people of the Woodlands to celebrate the new millennium. Dedicated to the Reverend Barry Oak on the 2nd of January 2000 AD. Yep, 
interesting little folly in the village. <coughs> I'm sure his name's Tom, and somewhere on it there is a cat in the brickwork. Designed and built by Tom Sharp. You should all be able to remember Tom Sharp. Here's a cat. So everything Tom Sharp builds, he puts a cat in, including the bus stop over the road. So something for the Wootons people to have. Rather lovely. Shame, shame none of the locals come out and give it a clean. Well, hey-ho. I guess not my job. Catch you later, guys. Actually, I've just switched back on. I had switched off. I will keep rolling here because this is a nice little bit of cycle route. So I'll show you. Tally-ho. Nice bit of a linear park, edge of a housing development, which is actually quite nice. Housing development built before they bought all these, build all these ghettos like they build now. These places, one way in, one way out, surrounded by a big fence. Little houses all crammed in together. This one looks rather nice. Lovely linear green space how do you do hanger left here again green space goes on I mean it is are you Halfwick councils up and down the country. Amenities, that's what we British people want. Something for blooming taxes. Bit of a skate park, football pit posts. I'll just look this way because there's a lady coming. So, we'll, I'll stop here and uh, bring you back a bit further along this track. Hello guys. Right. Here we've got the Great Ooze or the River Ooze which um, is a river that goes through Kings Lynn and heads across country for an awful long way. Uh, Bit busy. Over that way is a village called Clench Wharton, and from the town towards Clench Wharton, there is a a ferry, which is a passenger foot ferry. I've been across it. I went across it a couple of years ago. We'll just go down here and have a. Have, have a look at the the ships. So there's a the fish dock or the fish port. There's all your fishing boats and uh, and everything else. I don't know how much you can see. It's probably a long way off. Can I zoom this? No, no, you can't zoom on the go. Anyway, here's Kingsley. Port. Here's the Great Ooze. Now I'll bring you back soon. Hello. Just remember who brings you the most exciting videos on the net. That's Nottinghamshire Madness. So we've gone a bit further. We've gone past the fish port have you just seen. And now we're heading out towards the North Sea. And look what we've found. How cool is that? The Sway 
Freightliner. There's actually another one going out. Whether we'll be able to catch up with that, I don't know. Because the track gets a bit rough as we go down there. Anyway, this is what's passing by now. <clears throat> and it looks like it's not very full of anything. If you see the glimpse line or you see the marks, you see on the bow, you can't see it. That's running light. There it comes into the port of Kings Lynn. I tried to get in that area of the port on the way down past the fish port and I couldn't, but we'll find a way, I'm sure. You know the difference between a ship and a boat? <coughs> Ships carry boats. So if you see a ship with a boat on it, on a davit, that's a ship. And what it carries is a boat, i.e. a life raft. A lifeboat. That's proper cool, that is. I assume there's a pilot on board to bring it in. I did see a small craft between the two boats at ships earlier. So I assume he's uh, running a pilot or a couple of pilots about. And I guess the tide is on the turn heading out well there you see it a ship on the great ooze here's the great ooze up there we're going to have a look further down cheers I just thought I'd do your pan of the fishing boats Lynn sell shellfish. You know, um, you know it's a shellfish port. I mean, it doesn't smell so bad here, but you could really smell the smell the shellfish round the corner. You try and say, you try saying that when you're riding a bike. But yeah, cool view of the, of the fishing boat. Scrap make a port. Speed bump in the road. There's actually a cool building down here I want to look at. Stay with me. That was a good one. I'm just taking a photograph of a cool building on the uh, industrial estate. I think this looks rather cool. Just bear with me. Swing bridge in the distance. This is a. Hang on. <laughs> so that's a cool building. Would have been a cool building. Sort of 
1950s, probably the gatehouse from the docks. Here we go. There's a sign, it says, This stone was laid on the 18th day of October 1883 by His Grace the Duke of Portland to commemorate the construction of the Bentinck Dock. Well, the Duke of Portland is a Mansfield lad. I believe, all back estates. There's another plaque below it, let's see if we can read that. This plaque was unveiled on the 8th of October, 1935, by J.K. Stewart, Chairman of the Associated British Courts to celebrate the centenary of the opening of the Bentinck Dock. I guess the unfortunate thing is, it's not going to get a bicentenary, is it? What a shame. So there's a swing bridge. We stood on a swing bridge. Here's a, a dock. It was. All ancient history now. What am I getting into? I'm going to get the camera and get a picture of this building anyway. I just think it's cool. I can get through the fence. Here we go. Come on through the fence. A couple more in ballards. Just a bit of infrastructure I'm cycling down. Or rather nice. Garden's backing onto the river. I'll just get out of this guy's way. Certainly got its pleasant little bits of uh, cycling infrastructure through Kings Lynn. Look at the buddleys in there, that's amazing that is. Which dominoes. Cheers. Got a cool place to uh, to travel around. Hi guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Here's electric buzzing away. Right, we'll we'll stop here again. Bring you back again. I don't suppose, I don't suppose any town planners will ever watch this video, but let me show you how you do it. Cycle route goes across the entrance to a housing estate. Here's a Brompton. So you come in off the main road there, onto a subject of your road, it's a smaller road, in this case Lynn Sportway. And then you have that cycle route that crosses the road and it has a giveaway on it. It's set back, it's set well back from Lynn Sportway. Plenty of room, got probably three, probably four cars in that space or a lorry onto the housing estate. That's, that's how you do a cycle route, guys. Anyway, we're heading back to the Wartons, cash in a bit. 
We're back at the Wootton's guys, and I thought I'd just show you the Tom Sharp bus shelter. <clears throat> and uh, the cat. So, we're in Kings Lynn. I know one of my subscribers is from Kings Lynn. Who, who from Kings Lynn can tell me how many Tom Sharp structures there are? I know down at Lynn Sport there's a bus, a brick bus, which I think, a double decker bus, which I think has got a cat on it. So, I might Google it. So, I'm back at the waters now, heading back towards. Sandringham, there's a couple more bits to show you on the way. Got a bit of stone work in there, look. Bit of brick thrown in. A couple of bits of flint thrown in for good measure. Three bits of flint. Representing Norfolk, I assume. And like I say, the obligatory cat. Catch you in a bit. I thought I'd show you Old Hunstanton Church. Uh, more to the point, when I got to Old Hunstanton Church, no, sorry, Castle Rising Church on Old Hunstanton Road. But when I got here, let me show you this. Let's see if we can capture them. I don't know if you can hear that. I don't know if you, can, if you saw any of them. But it's a tree full of bees. Right, I'll scarper before they think he might he might be covered in nectar. One of my favourite bits of this ride. So just bear with me because up ahead I've just seen a woodpecker. See if it comes out in front of us. In a word, no. No, it didn't. Anyway, I'll film a bit more down here because it's a nice bit of a route. Hello. So this is Old Hunstanton Road out of Castle Rising and uh, it's a lovely tree lined avenue we'll film for a bit then after we've got to the end there is something else to show you so that's some people I don't want to capture those on film Your silhouetted. Hello. I don't like capturing people on videos. So this is, like I say, it's Old Stanton Road, which heads out back towards what I think is Queen Elizabeth Way. 
Hello. Hello. Lovely. I'll stop a minute. I'll stop a minute. I need to stop, I've got a flying helmet. So it's a lovely panoramic vista. There's a church in the distance, you've got no chance of seeing it. I did take a still though. If it comes out, I'll upload it, I'll, I'll try to include it. I don't know if I can include it anyway because I don't edit, I've no idea how to do that. Field full of sheep. Well, this is really nice, tree lined, bit of, bit of root, and it's the last little butterfly down there, the last little bit of easy coasting before the slight uphill back towards the Carolyn Camping Club site at Sandringham. Before we get there, there's one more thing I'm going to show you. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous ride through. I did notice as I came through Castle Rising, there were two tea rooms. One looked incredibly busy. The one looked incredibly busy is the one next door to the pub, whatever the pub's called. The pub does do food. And it does double gin and tonic for 12 quid. So how much the food is, I don't know, I didn't get that far. road surface is beginning to break up so how long it'll last before it gets potholed I don't know and actually as road surfaces go it's pretty good although they have done a repair here repair the pothole there and there's a new bit of time out there that's quite Quite a handful, single-handed, with a e Brompton that's got a powered front wheel. We'll stop at the bridge. I'll stop filming for this section, and then we'll. Carry on. In a minute, I'll just bump it up here. There's a river. Can't see anything in it. I think there's a footpath along there as well. Right. A little bit more in a bit. So you have seen this before on a video. Um, a long time ago. Either pre-COVID or just after COVID. I can't remember which. which. <laughs> this is a tin tabernacle church. And these were built in the early 1800s, I believe, for people to pray at in villages and on country estates, and there were quite a few. This is the British Orthodox Church, the Church of St. Mary and St. Felix Babingley Sunday services service to be conducted the first Sunday in each month 4th of June is that is that Sunday July 2nd of July 10 o'clock So a tin tabernacle.
How cool is that? I think last time I came here was wet and horrible and uh, I came to to look at the war grave which is their centre picture there's a bench there to sit on there we go lovely thatch roof some crosses up on the up on the roof on the thatch let's have a look around here so how cool is that as a church how cool is that as a piece of history British history, fairly unique, unique to Great Britain in the world of corrugated tin. <coughs> corrugated tins widely used around the world, well, the developing world, especially in Australia. <coughs> they make boats out of corrugated tin. One sheet will make a boat. Google it. <clears throat> Quaint English history. Most have gone, most have been pulled down. Old Cox giving it some stick out there, over there. Look at the, uh, look at the fence line. Man, there's loads of this on the estate. You see it on all the old country estates, and but the uh, mainly they've been let to go to rack and ruin, but I guess. Royalty, royalty do a bit more to uh, make sure this is uh, this is kept intact. Right, back to camp now. I don't think there's anything else to show you. Bye. Right, guys. Information. It's on commute in my name. Bike ride to. From Sandringham to Kingsland Port and back, 19.5 miles. <clears throat> My two speed Brompton electric, and I've used three bars of power on level two. I went out on level one and I've kept on level one all the way till I was heading back from the port. And as usual, I upped onto level two to give me the uh, Easy ride home. Cracking ride out. Thank you for joining me on this video. Hopefully it all pieces together nice when you get home and you can understand it and make something of it. Uh, certainly well worth a visit. Again, Kingsland, amazing place.